welcome to Tiger Bites. I'm Jay, and joining me today is Tim Newton. Thank you very much for having me, Jay, and uh, viewers at home. You're very welcome. Now, Tiger Bites is where we get to address your comments and feedback from all of our shows on YouTube, as well as the Tiger Talk Forum on the website, Facebook, and Instagram. I would be interested, actually, yes. uh, in the comment section below, if you could tell us where you watch Tiger Bites. Do you watch it on a computer, on a tablet, or on one of these things? That would sort of be interesting to know. Sure. I, I'm not sure why, but I, I would be interested to know where you watch it. All right, now let's go through all of your questions from this last week, and we get to answer back. So Paul Crouch asked the important question. Yes. Why is Natty so hot? Why is she so hot? Well, we actually have been doing temperature checks of people coming into the office each day. Yeah, so we make sure that her temperature is at a minimum. Natty's temperature is basically the same as everybody else's. Yeah. We haven't noted that she's been any hotter than anybody else. But uh, thank you for your concerns, Paul. Um, I've got a comment here from Scuba D. Now, we've been talking about the government a lot. And, and talking about government restrictions, and now he's got a very uh, important comment. Uh, Scuba D says, I need more government. Lock me down and govern me harder, Daddy. I don't know who he's talking to. Is he talking to the Prime Minister? I think so. The, uh, the Prime Minister usually gets referred to by the locals as Uncle Two. Oh, I see, yes. Which is right. effectively Crowd favorite. known. Crowd favorite. Not Daddy. Yeah. Uh, as King asks the, or does, makes the comment, they won't be making much money as Thailand is literally the most dangerous country on the planet for Western tourists. That's wrong. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's right. I understand that people see that coming to Thailand at the moment, uh, there are risks involved with yes. coming, testing positive, then having to stay in your hotel, or if you've got symptoms, been taken away to a, uh, a field hospital or put into a hospital. Uh, but these are like really low risks. The number yes. of people are in the, the very, very lows. And there's a 0.5 or point, not 0.1, right. 1% or 0.5%, a very, very low percentage. We get to hear about them because they're sort of big media stories. But generally, it's still pretty safe to come to Thailand. Yeah. And given the, uh, the rate of cases at the moment and the rate of hospitalizations, it appears that it's much safer here than a lot of other places in the world. I've noticed a lot of these negative comments about Thailand usually come from people who have never even been to Thailand. Or if they have, I wonder what activities you're doing that you, um, you know. It sounds so risky. Yeah, so dangerous. What are, you, what are you up to? Yeah, I have to say, walking down the street on a daily basis, uh, going about my life, uh, strangely, even driving on the roads, uh, I don't feel any less safe here than I used to in Australia. Uh, mind you, I drive most of the time on the roads in a car, but your rate of your death rate driving in a car isn't that much higher in Thailand than many other places in the world. Where the death rate really soars is if you're on a motorbike or if you're under 24 and male. And in most cases, I think they say that over 50% of those people that are die or that uh, get arrested have been drinking alcohol. So, so what uh, I got from that is that if you're under 24 and a male, don't drive a motorbike. Very good idea. All right. Johnny, um, my turn, your turn. May I? Please. All right. Uh, we have a returning viewer, Boon Boon, and he says, now I remember why I stopped watching this crap. Well, you're welcome, Boon Boon. And thank you for watching so you could tell us that you're not watching again. Uh, Johnny Triple Zero says, sorry, not coming this winter. Too many chances for problems. I suppose reflecting the comments of the other person. Look, I mean, we understand that uh, there are issues of getting into Thailand at the moment. It's not really much more difficult now than it was you know, the, the last year. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have the test and go. We don't have the one where you stay in a hotel for a night, you get your negative PCR test, and off you go. You now have to do a sandbox in one of four locations. Mm -hmm. But during that seven days, you can wander anywhere you like around Phuket, Bang Na, Krabi, depending on which sandbox you choose, or Samui, including the uh, two of the, the Gulf Islands there. So it's not as if you're like locked in a room. There's plenty to see on those particular locations. If you want to go to Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Hua Hin, don't cry, it's okay. Well, it's a bit windy. I Sorry. know, it's sad. <laughs> Uh, or Pattaya. Okay, yes, uh, you're going to have to do your sandbox before you can travel off to those locations. But after seven days in a sandbox area, 
you can go anywhere you like. All right, we've got a lot of intellectuals uh, watching the tiger. And I've got a comment here from Jordan Goldberg who says, Jay, you suffer from Ligoria. To which I thought, I wonder what that means. So I Googled it uh -huh. and Ligoria means a tendency to extreme loquacity. To which I then Googled it once again. Uh, loquacity means the quality of talking a great deal or talkativeness. He might just be saying, Jay, you talk a lot. Oh, that's shocking, Jay. How, but, how rude. I've, I've learned two new words, so thank you for that, Jordan. Uh, Domon Cashew says, What does the Air Force need fighter planes for? Try buying some decent equipment for Thai soldiers stuck in the southern part of the country. Referring there to the southern insurgency, which is an ongoing uh, problem for the army and the Thai governments and Malaysian government, of course. While he was stationed there, my son was having to buy essential gear for himself as some of the issue kit was useless. Uh, that has been an ongoing problem for both soldiers and police in Thailand, sometimes having to buy their own gear. Uh, why does the Air Force need fighter planes? Well, they need to be able to photograph their submarines. Yeah. So that's why. Of course. Over right. to you. Uh, Kevin Carr says, can't stand this candy ass Jay. I think he thinks I'm sweet. Candy's sweet. Kevin, namaste. Candy, I didn't mean that you're sort of sweeter, you're saccharine sweet or something. I'm sweet, I'm good with kids. You're picking a lot about you today. It just seems to be all about me, what can I say? Every show's all about you, Jay. Paul Moxie is not talking about you, Jay, I'm sorry. Oh no. Thailand has a tourism problem already with all the things you need to pay for re-entry and on entry, plus the risk of being thrown into an expensive quarantine. As I pointed out, that's very low risk. Uh, why not throw another cost on top of that? Talking about the tourism tax. Genius planning, let's milk people all we can, right? So uh, thank you very much, Paul. All right. Who, I'm um, sorry, didn't mention you at all. Oh, well. What can we do? Frank in Thailand says, Boyd, that's Boyd Lofty right here. He says, Boyd is obviously a good reference to BYD, but could you really imagine a child calling their bear Boyd? Loft not? Lofty is so much softer and sweeter. You guys should ask some children. Well, do you like being called Boyd or Lofty? He's quite happy with Boyd. Boyd Lofty? Just Boyd. Boyd Lofty. No, just Boyd. It's like Paddington. Just Boyd. I don't think they ever... Paddington's not, you know, it doesn't really roll off the tongue, especially if you're a little kid. It's Paddy for short. Or if it was in Australia, Paddo. <laughs> uh, we have been at BYD Lofts all week. Thank you very much for their great hospitality. Yes. A few stragglers here having a late breakfast. What, it's about uh, 22 minutes past 10 on a Friday morning as we uh, record Tiger Bites this week with Boyd. Just Boyd. That's right. My turn? Yes. Uh, Janet Stockler. Janet, thank you for writing in our comments section. Why does Thailand no longer want Western tourists? We spent millions of baht in Thailand in past many years. I don't think there is any indication that Thailand doesn't want Western tourists as opposed to any other tourists. I've never seen anything published in recent years that said we only want tourists out of East, uh, East Europe or I'm not sure what you're calling Western uh, tourists anyway. Uh, do, do they prefer Asian tourists to Western tourists? I've seen no indication about that. I mean, the fact that we used to have a lot of Chinese tourists is pretty much based on the fact that you can get here within, say, five hours flying. Same with a lot of other Asian destinations. They're a lot closer to Thailand. So uh, the, the government's never really said, oh, we don't want this tourist or that tourist. At the moment, they've got bans on some countries from uh, applying for a Thailand pass. Some countries still have to come in under quarantine. But that's not a West versus East thing. That's just on a country by country basis. Some of it obviously is a bit ironic or strange, but I've never seen any indication that the Thai go government through their tourism arms have shown any particular preference for one type of tourist than another. They keep on saying they want uh, uh, high uh, income tourists, mm. but that never sort of seems to happen. That's right. Uh, all right, my last comment for today says... What were you checking there? I was trying to find a comment. 
that was okay. not about me. <laughs> That's truth, actually. <laughs> uh, Thug Life. Well, obviously, I'm going to focus on comments that are trying to make fun of me so that I could talk back to them. Oh, you've got plenty to choose from. That's right, I do. Uh, like Chicano on the go, who says, this is obviously clickbait. clickbait. I thought they were going to fire Jay. Oh, this is last week, the, uh, what did From it say? From Tiger Bites. Firing Jay. Firing Jay. Yeah. We, we didn't. Well, Chicano on the go was very upset. Ah, uh, well. We'll see what we can do for you. <laughs> um, ITN. Yes. I think that's how it's pronounced. It says, make a deal. Abolish two-tier pricing and tourists will happily pay 500 baht tourist tax to help fund improving tourist venues. So what do you think, I'm like this two-tier pricing thing just goes on and on. It's like, uh, gee, we've got nothing else to talk about. Let's talk about two-tier pricing. Uh, there are obviously some locations in Thailand where they've got a price for non-locals and a price for locals. Some places, if you've got a work permit, they'll let you in for the local price. Others won't. I mean, the situation is lumpy and it's not consistent throughout Thailand. A lot of people say, well, you know, you can't charge the average Thai the same amount that you're charging the average foreign tourist because the average, uh, say, even Western tourists may be higher. And, you know, people who are on an average Thai wage out in the country are not going to be as able to afford to go to the local zoo as a foreigner. So, but I don't know. Imagine if you're paying a 500 baht just because you're a foreigner and that's foreign tax should there be only foreigner zones? So you enter the park or you enter the zoo and, uh, excuse me, this is uh, a foreigner zone only because they earn more, therefore they paid more, therefore they get exclusive treatment. Well, I think the 500 baht reference there is about the tourist tax, which is only going to be 300 baht yeah. on April the 1st. Yeah, I'm referring to the dual pricing mainly, you know. Yeah, look, I mean, it's a vexed question and it's just as difficult for the government to sort out. Um, there's one blogger who's like been driving this really hard and uh, the, the Tourism Authority has shown uh, no inclination to want to get rid of the two-tier pricing and I think they'll leave it up to the provinces and individual businesses to decide how, how they're going to administer two-tier pricing in the future. That's my prediction. All right. My... Go on. Actually, you know what, I'd like to end with my comment as the last one, so okay, could you please do one more? Okay. Um, okay. Joe Dirt says the easiest way to keep the taxis relatively honest is to threaten to bring in Uber if they don't. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, we can say that oh, uh, in Thailand, and in, well, just about everywhere around Thailand, you have, uh, I know of two others. There's Grab, which is well known. There's another one which people are using at the moment. I can't remember the name. In, I think in something, in driver, in cab. Yeah, the, I the, forgot the name. I'd actually... Similar type. <clears throat> yes. Type of situation. But... A grab taxi in Phuket will cost exactly the same amount as a regular taxi. In other words, the mafias got to them and said, you charge our high price, well, you're not going to be using our roads. Or if you do, watch out. Yeah. That's exactly what's happened. Uh, generally, taxis grab in Bangkok. And Chiang Mai. Uh, at, well, I don't know about Chiang Mai. In I can't Ch speak I know, with I know authority. About Chiang Mai. Yeah. But uh, as far as Bangkok's concerned, relative to Phuket, uh, at least a third the price for a taxi. Yeah, they charge by the kilometer properly. Yeah. And also, there was Uber in Thailand. Uh, however, Uber uh, Grab bought the rights. Oh, OK. Yeah. So yeah, Grab, and there's this other one um, that seems that people keep on telling me about it. Oh, you must try this, it's cheaper. But I can never remember the name. I, I can remember the name if I had my phone with me currently. However, it's with Golf right now, and he's too busy for me. Right. Right. And I'm going to end the show on this last comment. Thug Life summarizes my existence. He says, I never really liked Jay at the beginning, but he kind of grows on you, you know, like a wart. You get so used to him that you barely notice him. What's the way I most suppose people feel? Well, we look at Jay in the office as well. Yeah. Um, pretty much the same sort of sentiment. Mm. But yeah, we're, we're used to him. I don't have yeah. warts, but if I did, I understand what you mean. At some point, you're just like, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Thug Life, for summarizing that uh, in such an elegant way. And okay. with that... It's goodbye BYD Loft. It's goodbye Boyd. It's goodbye... 
hordes of people that have come to say hello to us. That's right, and it's goodbye to you for this week. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, you can comment on the show in on YouTube below, as well as Instagram, Facebook, and the Tiger Talk Forum on the website. Um, as for now, I'd like to say thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, viewer. That's right. And thank you, viewers. I think by the time this is out, we're going to hit 100,000 subscribers. We're about 70 subscribers away. So looking forward to the celebrations coming Free up. Free soda water for everybody in the office next week. That's right. And if you've made it so far, please click the like button and subscribe and Thanks. share to people who you think might enjoy this. Um, and, sods. <laughs> and have a great weekend.